Hey everyone, my name is Emma and welcome back to Story Central, your center for all the best stories on Reddit. Not to give too much info away, I was hired at an organization as a job title of basically helper. Well, for someone who is supposed to just be helping, I had a ridiculous amount of work. Almost all of my coworkers were huge technologically illiterate boomers. So I actually sort of thrived on this as a very useful person. For example, one guy would spend half his day copying items and passing them into another program we use. He did and even use Control C Control V. He would right click then copy then go into the files menu or something and insert copied item from clipboard. He was so proud of himself when he showed me because don't worry you won't have to retype everything. I wrote a program to do this automatically but did not tell him. So I would just run it occasionally as part of my responsibilities. Anyway, I did a lot of stuff like this. I'd estimate I saved about 15 hours of work every day on top of the 8.5 hours I did too but then insert Sergeant Frick face. This wasn't the military, but I just like to call him that. We are having a team meeting when he shows up. White hair combed Ake-ish, a scrunched face, glasses. He just sort of just showed up one day and took notes during our morning meeting. At one point, someone brought up the name of one of our customers. I said, oh, is that the 300 pounds guy with a big beard? Sort of as a joke because I mostly do back end stuff. There was a guy like this I recently did some entrance stuff for. But I was wrong and my boss said no it's blah blah some other person. Okay. Then we talked about that person a bit. Fast forward about a week and this Sergeant FF is a complete freaking douchebag to me. I don't know why. He will ignore me during group conversations and literally sometimes scoff at me. Who actually scoffs at people? I was having a really rough week looking for some extremely important files. People were yelling all day. I was exasperated. Too much to do. I was having anxiety attacks at home in the middle of the night. But it was Friday so I was pulling through. As I looked for this file I ended up deep in our file structure. And the search returned a personal folder structure within one of the drives. I clicked out of curiosity, and there it was Sergeant FF's notes. I opened it and there was a whole section about me. This guy basically goes from location to location getting people fired to save the CEO's money. And he was working on me now. I scrolled through his notes and at the very top I saw Frosty thought a 4 and 24 year old female patient was a 300 pounds bearded man. Clearly atrocious attention to detail that's just one example of how completely fricked up his comments were. So, in combination with my job, which I generally liked and enjoyed helping people, knowing I wasn't getting paid enough for my effort. This horrible week I had. And Sergeant Frick faces comments, I said Frick this. I set up three email configurations. One, to my boss letting him know I will be taking two weeks of vacation time. To be sent at 10 p.m. tonight. Two, to the company letting them know I will not be present for two weeks so whatever work they currently need me to do they will need to do themselves. To be sent Monday morning at 4 a.m. Three, for any emails that came in, I set an auto response that said I will be out for an unknown amount of time. For any routine, emergency, or even occasional items, it is imperative you reach out to Sergeant Frickface at XYZ for assistance then. I turned off every automated task I had ever set up. Then I swung by FF's temporary office and said I think I found a way to make your job easier. He didn't even really turn his head to look at me but just raised one eyebrow. Then I left. I actually got multiple calls on Monday morning I didn't answer. It didn't last long apparently, but I stayed strong and didn't respond to anything. On Wednesday I had a little anxiety about it but I stayed as strong as I could. I thought about the tasks that needed a two-day turnaround. There's no way some of the guys were keeping up with their normal duties. Guaranteed at least two people were no longer doing their normal jobs just to keep up with my automated tasks. I got a long email to my personal account, I guess from my resume or when I interviewed, from my boss on Thursday night of the first week. It went something like this, Frosty, I know you're a smart person and probably figured out what the company had us doing. I would say it's very important you call me but that probably isn't going to work I see. I've talked with Sergeant FF's boss and he will be leaving our location. I explained our progress meetings seem to be going in the wrong direction and that you are one of our most valuable employees here. I am sure you are probably looking at other jobs at this point, or maybe you have even started one. I hope not. If you could please reach back to me I would like to offer you a raise. It has become very apparent how useful you are around here. I hear about it every day, believe me. So I came back on Monday with a $10,000 raise and Sergeant Frick face out of my face. My boss apologized again in person and said he didn't get a say in it. I think it's a little weird he could have a say after I left, but not before. But I sort of get it. Not an idiot. With jobs that involve helping or fixing problems, your work is often difficult to show on paper which is why a ticketing system might help. 
That being said, my own company has a decent ticketing system, but most of my clients don't open a ticket, and my life is filled with shoulder taps. Not an idiot. Probably he has no hard evidence of your contribution, but with your leave of absence everything came into place for him to convince the higher-ups. Credits to him for stepping up in the end and get you a raise, though not sure if it's reasonable enough. Now for the next story. I, male 35, have a young brother Todd, male 29, who had a complicated birth and had to stay a month in the ICU and because of that my parents have always doted on him and almost denied him nothing, even if it was to the detriment of my sister Abby, female 32, and I my brother drinks in the attention and has on more than one occasion made himself the center of attention at either my, my sister's, or a cousin's special event. Because of this Abby and I have a strained relationship with Todd and our parents. Unfortunately, Todd met and fell in love with Lucy, female 24, who announced her own pregnancy at the baby shower my mom held for Abby. When I proposed to my wife Michelle, female 30, I just wanted to elope but she really wanted her family to be there so I invited my family out of obligation. While out my best man Jim, male 35, noticed a receipt from a jewelry store slipped out of Todd's pocket. Jim confronted Todd about this which led to an argument. Jim told me everything and I told Todd that he was no longer going to be a groomsman because I knew he was going to propose at my wedding. Todd cried to our parents and which led to a blowout. In my parents' eyes, since Todd never admitted that he was going to propose to Lucy at my wedding I was unfairly judging him. I refused and brought up Todd's past behavior. My parents couldn't refute this and got Todd to agree to not try anything at my wedding. This wasn't enough to convince me to let him be a groomsman but I warned him that if, as a guest, he'd try anything I would make him regret it. Fast forward to the wedding and surprise surprise Todd walked over to Lucy and proposed to her during Michelle's father-daughter dance and did it in a way so that everyone would notice. Cue my revenge, Jim and I had hired a woman to pretend to be Todd's side piece who cornered Todd and Lucy and claimed that she was pregnant with his baby. Todd denied this but when she called his phone, I gave her his number and messed with Todd's phone to incriminate him, it didn't look good. Lucy threw the ring back at Todd and left in tears. When Todd saw the smile on my face he knew that it was me and I didn't respond to a single call, text from him or my parents until after the honeymoon. Lucy has thrown Todd's stuff out and has been denying access to their kid. Todd is furious and is demanding that I clear his name. I sent him a text saying that I had no idea what he was talking about as well as a screenshot of a bill for the wedding and gave a vague message demanding reimbursement for half of the wedding cost. Michelle knew the whole time what I was planning and gave me the green light after Todd ruined her moment with her dad, so I felt pretty good but now even Abby thinks I went too far. Not an idiot. Todd gets caught out. Todd gets warned not to try anything or he will regret it. Todd does his thing anyway. Todd is made to regret doing his thing. Yeah, things escalated into a nuclear option. But dude had every opportunity not to be a shit nugget. If he's left doing his best surprised Pikachu impression now, that's on him. Not an idiot. Let's not feel too sorry for Lucy in this either, she announced her pregnancy at her sister-in-law's baby shower. Obviously she is fine with stealing the spotlight onto herself too, they're a couple made in a manure pile. I feel sorry for the kid in the sense of his dad freaking around and finding out, and I hope it comes better for him, but Todd and Lucy can go and get stuff. Now for the next story. I've come to a cafe near my office for lunch, and the only space they had to sit was at the end of a communal table. No problem, I sat at the very end of the table, leaving three other spaces. I ordered my lunch and sat there minding my own business. A couple of women arrived soon after and politely asked if they could sit at two of the free spaces next to me. No problem. Then, when I was just starting to eat my lunch, two other people arrived to join them. There was only one other free seat left, so what did they do? Yep, asked me to move somewhere else. The cafe is full, I'm in the middle of my meal, and I was here before any of them. I politely refused. Now they're carrying on about how selfish I'm being, taking up the entire communal table when I'm only one person. They're watching me eat, willing me to finish and leave. Frick him. Once I've finished eating, I'm going to order a coffee, linger over it, and then order a slice of cake. Not an idiot. When I was a server I had a guy sit at the last table available in my section. He was so nice and polite and totally understood me being crazy busy. He orders and just as I put his order in, this group of two walk in, past the host cause they saw their friends in a booth which happens to be next to this guy. These two Karens decided he had to leave because they wanted to be next to their friends. Friends were a four top so the two girls were not gonna fit in the friends booth and no way in hell was I blocking the walkway by playing two damn chairs at the end of the booth or even a table at the end of the booth for them. That's a fire hazard. 
Anyways, that pissed me off so I told the two Karens I'm sorry but we are packed and we have a wait list. You need to go back up front and wait like everyone else you would have think I made a field goal with their kitten with the look they gave me. The guy was gonna cancel and leave but I said no, sir you stay where you are and take all the time you need. I made sure he stayed a while. I gave him a side salad, so he had more to eat. When he finished, I gave him a dessert. My best friend and I always watched each other's back so she made sure his drink was always full when I couldn't. We had a newspaper behind the counter. I gave it to him to read. He knew what I was doing. He thought it was funny. He said he would pay for everything. But I told him oh no dot 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 just pay for the meal you order. You are doing a huge favor for me by sitting here cause no way in hell do I want them in my section. Their friends surprisingly didn't have the guts to say anything. By the time those two got sat, on the other side of the restaurant the four top were leaving for their movie. The guy became my awesome regular. Always tipped a lot as well.